Hello fellow mega lovers, how are you guys doing today? I am super excited for this video because we're going to be playing with the new Be Perfect Cosmetics times Stacey Marie Cardinal 3 Tahiti palette, which is quite a mouthful, but this palette is so, so beautiful. I try not to go for just classic rainbow palettes as often, but this was so aesthetically pleasing, I could not help myself. So I did purchase this on the pre-launch early access, which was I think about a week ago. And it literally shipped from Northern Ireland to North Carolina in three days. Like I don't even know how that happened. I'm not complaining. The $13 international shipping was 100% worth it. So we are going to be doing swatches first and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the eye look that I'm wearing now. And at the very end, I'll kind of give you my thoughts on the formula and my experience using the palette overall. So before we jump into all that, I did want to quickly say hello, welcome for the first time if you're new here or welcome back. If you've never watched one of my videos before, my name is Amy and I love talking about makeup from indie brands, small brands, brands from all around the world. I just have so much fun doing it. So if you're interested in more content like what you're watching today, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now let's go ahead and jump on into some swatches. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and do these swatches row by row. I like to live swatch and just take my time and part of the reason is because I just love swatching shadows. I think it's so much fun. So first we have the shade Forest which is a kind of deep just true green matte. We have the shade Bamboo. Bamboo? Why did I just say it like that? I, I don't know. Bamboo which is a very grungy kind of yellowy green. I really really love colors like that. And then we have Key Lime which as the name suggests is a very true Key Lime matte green. So there's the first three swatches. That key lime shade is definitely a little bit more sheer. And I would say just touching the texture of the matte shadows, they do not feel super creamy, but they also don't feel super dry. They're kind of just right in the middle. Okay, next we have the shade Vanilla, which looks like it's kind of like a true white shimmer. But in some lights, it looks like there's just a tiny bit of like a greeny gold reflect to it. And then we have the Deep, which is a very cobalt matte blue. And then Khaki, which is kind of like a khaki grungy brown. Next we have Tahiti Green, which is a true lime green shimmer. That one's a little bit more pigmented. Tropics, which is a bright mid-tone green matte. And then the Reef or technically just Reef, which is a really pretty kind of bright teal, but again, that one in particular feels a little bit more sheer. And lastly, for the blues and greens, we have the shade Lagoon, which is kind of like a sky blue matte with a little bit of depth to it. So there's what we're working with so far. I will say that these swatches look completely different than the ones that I saw advertised with this palette. I feel like those must have been built up to the high heavens because this is a lot more sheer. You'll have to stay tuned to see how I feel about them on the eyes, but they do not look like the swatches that were marketed. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and swatch the three middle rows, which are all kind of some neutrals some warm orangey shades, and then some corals and reds. So first we have the shade Clay, which looks like a really pretty mustard yellow. I love shades like that. We have Cocoa, which is a very red-toned brown, and then Rum, which is one of the more sparkly metallic shades, kind of like a bronze with gold flecks to it. Feels really, really pretty. Looks really pretty in person. Ooh that shade clay. Yes, that is so pretty. Next we have tan lines, which is a little bit more of like a rosy brown matte, and then ginger, which is a warm brown matte, and then we have the shade sand, which is a very soft peach. Which actually matches my nails pretty well. Next we have the shade yellow, but it's yellow, <laughs> that's super cute. And it's more almost like a marigold yellow, I would say, rather than just a true bright yellow. We have coral, which that seems to have a decent pigmentation to it, just a nice coral matte, has a bit of a neonness to it, and then bare, which, ooh, that's a really pretty rosy pink. 
So, you know, you do have just a few pops of neutrals in here, but overall I feel like it's mostly just fun. Next we have Hibiscus, which is another kind of rosy pink, but it has a little bit more depth to it, another matte. We have Mango, which is actually really a sheer orange. Not that much coming off from that one, feels a little bit more thin. And then we have Sundown, which is another coral, but that one's definitely more orangey. That orange is disappointing, what the heck? That orange right there, that's crazy. Look at it in the palette versus how it swatches. And then lastly, we have Blaze, which looks to be kind of just a true matte red. JJ, which is another really pretty sparkly shade. That one is like a purpley pink with a blue shift to it. And then we have Chili Pepper, which, ooh, that one's a little bit drier, but very pigmented, and it's a kind of deeper red. Oh yeah, the reds definitely feel more dry, but at least that one has more of a smooth application compared to a lot of the other mattes that we've got going on here. So those are all of the warm neutrals. Again, I can't help but look at this and just compare them to the swatches I saw online. I mean, I feel like it should be common knowledge that swatches, especially from a brand, should not be trusted, but they looked really, really crazy. Like I was trusting them. I don't know. Let's go ahead and do the last three rows, the pinky purple section. We'll start off with Pearl, which is a pink shimmer, but this one actually has a tiny bit of a blue shift to it. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I really saw it on this one when I applied it to the inner corner, so I thought that was a pleasant surprise. I love a good duochrome. And then we have Bloom, which is very pigmented. That one has some kickback, and it's just kind of like a raspberry matte. And then Pink Lily is, again, pretty pigmented and more of a neon pink. See, isn't that shade so pretty? I really like that one. Ooh. Okay, next we have the shade Blue Moon, kind of like a blue purple with all kinds of shift zooming on it. It just looks super textured in the pan, so I'm excited to put my fingers into it. We have Fruity, which is, ooh, that's actually pretty sheer, just touching it. Not a bunch of pigments coming off, another very thin matte. And then we have Lilac, which is a soft lilac matte. Okay, next we have Tahiti, which that one again feels a little bit more sheer. But it's a pretty kind of pinky purple matte. And then we have Rose Pink, which this one is really stunning. It's a shimmer pink with a bit of a gold reflect to it. And then Magenta. That one's a little bit more pigmented. And I feel like some of the pink mattes here are a little bit repetitive. Ooh, Tahiti, my goodness. What happened to you? <laughs> okay. Look at that shimmer though. That's really pretty, right? Next we have Blackberry, which is a true deep, deep indigo. We have Starlight, which this is the shade I was most excited about. It's another purple blue shifting shadow but it just has such a foil to it. And then Grape, which is one of the shades I like to describe as a Barney Purple. Look at that color. <sighs> Last but not least, we have Amethyst, which is a shimmery purple, but that one is a little bit less textured. It's more of just a satin. We have Twilight, again, Kind of like a Barney purple with a bit more burgundy tone to it. And then Black Beach, which is a black matte. Is it just me or do Grape and Twilight look like the same color? Just throwing it out there. So there's the final set of swatches. Now let's go ahead and jump on into this look. So I already primed my eyes and I used the Milani eyeshadow primer for longevity and then just threw a touch of the Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Fair on top for some coverage. I am like sweating and I'm so hot right now and it's honestly just because I'm so excited to play with this palette. It is so beautiful in person. I'm, I just, I can't even handle it. I already know this purple shade. I'm sure you've already seen the intro. This has got to go all over my lid today. I'm Oh, it's so pretty. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this shade right here called Lilac. Dipping into the pan, there is a little bit of kickback, but I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that through my crease to start off with with a big fluffy blending brush. And it's got pretty decent pigmentation for a light pastel shade. 
just gonna go ahead and blend in circular motions just using this one as my transition today I'm gonna try and use a bunch of shades obviously not all of the shades in the palette but quite a few through my crease so this is just the base can you imagine though doing the I used every shade in a palette challenge with this palette I feel like it's blending out a little bit more into like a muted rosy tone on my eyes but I'm gonna go ahead and let's see I think I'm gonna grab we'll grab this one right here the shade Tahiti that the whole palette's inspired by so I'm picking that one up and it actually doesn't have any kickback at all I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right through my crease really good pigmentation so that is building really easily I'm just gonna go ahead and go back into my previous brush and blend out the edges a little bit more there are so many pretty purple matte shades I could go in with to deepen now between grape twilight blackberry but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do twilight because I'm reading midnight sun right now why not <laughs> Just gonna pop that on my outer V. It's a very, very pinky kind of barney purple. See, that's a little bit less deep than I thought it was gonna be. It's a bit more just bright. All right, again, I'm just gonna go back in with my previous brush and blend out the edge there once I've gotten the color down. I feel like I'm being a little bit messy and I think it's just because I'm so excited right now. I'm like slapping these shades on my eyeballs. But I feel like it's still working out. It's still blending super easily. I mean, I did almost my entire crease in like five minutes and everything looks very blended. So I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the darkest purple, this one called Blackberry, just because I do want to deepen this a little bit more. And I'm going to go into a pencil brush. It's more of an indigo. So again, I'm just kind of laying the color down, just throwing the pigment where I want it, not worrying too much about blending. Then I'll go into the brush that I used before that and again, just lightly blend the edges. I'm pretty happy so far with how the colors are layering because sometimes I have the issue with my outer V where if I put too many colors and certain formulas on my outer V, it'll start getting patchy and I'm not having that issue so far but I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it one step further just cause I, like I said, I wanna use a bunch of colors today. I'm gonna take the shade Black Beach and use that again on that pencil brush to deepen this just a tiny bit more. I do really appreciate that there's a black in this palette and it seems to be really pigmented, but it's kind of in the middle where it's letting me blend it a little bit, but it's not too pigmented to where I feel like I have to be super, super careful with it. Again, you know the drill, just going in with my previous brush. I'm going to go ahead and go back into the first brush that I used, that big fluffy blending brush, and start off by blending everything, but I might go back into a little bit more of that lilac. All right, like I said, just grabbing a touch more of lilac and just lightly, barely even touching my skin with it, going over the crease. I'm going to go ahead and dip into the shade Grape, and I'm going to put that on the outer like third of my lower lash line. All right, now I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of Pink Lily. Again, just picking up a tiny, tiny bit and popping that onto the center of my lower lash line. Hmm, I'm gonna take this shade right here, which is called Rose Pink. It looks like a really, really pretty shimmer. And I'm gonna pop that on the front of the lower lash line. Yeah, that definitely has some really pretty sparkle to it. I think actually, as I'm blending that in, I feel like the pop of pink on the lower lash line is not as intense as I wanted it. So I'm gonna go back into a little bit more of Pink Lily. I feel like it blended into the purple quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my NYX glitter glue and do a little bit of a faux cut crease. Just kind of mapping that out with the glitter glue instead of using concealer. I got this tip from Butte Bean and I believe Paulina's Beauty as well. I used to see her do this a ton. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and dip into Starlight. It's a little bit more chunky. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that down. Okay, so 
let's see, maybe this isn't the best brush for this, but I was trying to do something a little bit more precise. I'm just going to grab into some more. It's almost reminding me of a little bit more like a flaky formula. So I think it has to be built up a bit, but it is really pretty. Or it could be pretty as a topper over another shade. Because it is more flaky, if you do have more texture on your lids, it might be one of those formulas that really accentuates that. So that's something to look out for. But look how that catches the light. That is so, so pretty. And actually, like I said, I did get a little bit of fallout from that but it just looks like a few specks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this light pink shimmer right here called Pearl, and I'm gonna pop that on my inner corner. Ooh, it almost looked like that has a bit of a blue shift to it. I was not expecting that. That's really pretty. So to finish up my eyes, I'm gonna go into my ColourPop Boots liner just to add more impact to the pink pop on the lower lash line. I'm gonna throw on my We Make Up More mascara and I'll be right back. So quickly finishing up the face, I'm gonna go into my Elite Cosmetics blush in the shade Desire, which is just a really cute soft pink. For highlighter, I'm gonna take my Lethal Cosmetics Ionic highlighter, which is a pretty neutral shade with just the tiniest, tiniest little tint of pink to it. So I thought it would be pretty with this look, but it's also just one of my favorite highlights ever. So I'm just gonna softly throw that on the tops of my cheekbones, my nose, my chin. For lips, I'm gonna start off by lining them with the Wayne Goss Essential Lip Pencil in the shade Vintage Pink. It's the lightest shade, and I really like this formula. I'm also going to go ahead and just fill in my lips with that as well. And then I'm going to top it with my Alamar Cosmetics Birthday Suit Lip Gloss. Alright, so this is the finished look and I really love how it turned out. I am always here for a purple eye, a nude lip, some shiny cheeks. It's a go-to, but let's go ahead and talk about the formula of the palette. I will say that I think if I had swatched the palette first, I probably would have gone into the tutorial feeling a little bit disappointed because it swatches a lot less pigmented than what I was originally anticipating, so that's something to keep in mind. And it does feel like between the mattes, there are some different formulas going on. Some are more pigmented, some are more dry, some are more thin, but overall, I felt like all of the mattes that I used in my look today, which was quite a lot, I didn't have issues with any of them. They all blended and they all had good pigmentation on the eyes, which is what really matters. And also, again, like I said during the demo, I have issues sometimes with colors not wanting to pack on top of one another. And I had no problem with this palette, which definitely puts it a little bit higher in my book. As far as the shimmers go, there are some really pretty ones in here and there's a bunch of different textures and sparkles and shifts going on, which I really appreciate because I have the original be Perfect Cosmetics Carnival palette, which I have right here to show you. And one of the things about this palette is that I really loved the mattes in here. I feel like they're super easy to use, super easy to blend, which I would say the same to the Tahiti palette. But these shimmers are all very like flat, just not as intense shimmers as what I'm used to now because there's so many indie brands that have just completely blown regular shimmer shadows out of the water. So I appreciate that this updated version is keeping up with the times. Also, there's what the two palettes look like next to one another. There is no exact repeating shades, but there are a few that are sort of similar. As far as rainbow palettes go, the way that it was organized is super aesthetically pleasing to me. I feel very inspired when I look at this palette. I definitely want to do a multiple looks video using it, so stay tuned for that. And overall, I would say that I'm happy with it. Even though I was on the website trying to order this for over two hours, it shipped so fast. I'm still a little shook. So I would love to know what you think of this palette if you're planning on purchasing it. I do believe that it's sold out right now, but I will definitely keep you updated in the description box. And if it does eventually go live on Beauty Bay, I'll make sure to leave that link down below for you. So that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.